to a tutorial on the posterior pituitary as it releases oxytocin. There are several functions of oxytocin, some that take place in a female who is either pregnant or has recently delivered, and others effects in the female that are seen when a female is not pregnant. So, in the case of a pregnant female, it is the production of oxytocin that leads to labor and contraction of the uterus to expel the fetus for delivery. And then post labor and through the lactation process, oxytocin is released in surges every time the baby suckles in order to get the milk that was produced by prolactin to be ejected out of the breast tissue. Now, in a female that is not pregnant, oxytocin is released on a monthly basis to assist in the contraction of the uterus for menses. So this helps with the sloughing of the lining in the menstrual period. And then also during sexual stimulation, we find that oxytocin can cause reverse peristalsis in the uterus to assist the female system with drawing sperm or sucking up sperm into the uterus. This tutorial will focus on the female, but we find that males also will release oxytocin and there's a link to the sex act with oxytocin in males. Okay, so first things first, we're going to draw a flow diagram because we want to look at how oxytocin is released from the hypothalamus and how it targets the tissues. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to consider the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So as I draw this illustration, the top here is to indicate the floor of the brain, which is the hypothalamus, as it connects to the pituitary. And the pituitary has an anterior and a posterior aspect to it. Now, the posterior aspect is the side that is going to be releasing oxytocin, and the posterior pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus via nerve cells. These are neurosecretory cells. So inside the hypothalamus, there is some signal to a nerve cell that then targets the posterior pituitary, and it's that nerve cell that releases oxytocin into circulation. Now, what causes oxytocin? Well, we're going to look at this in two folds, and I'm going to actually erase part of this diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to consider a non-pregnant individual, and what is the trigger for the hypothalamus to begin releasing oxytocin? So the first thing that acts as a trigger to the hypothalamus is the decreasing levels of progesterone, at the end of a 28-day menstrual cycle. So as progesterone levels fall due to lack of pregnancy, the hypothalamus detects lowering amounts of progesterone. This causes the secretion of oxytocin. Now, if you recall from the previous slide, there's more than just menstruation associated with a non-pregnant female. Anytime I have increased sexual stimulation, also going to cause the hypothalamus to begin the release of oxytocin. Now when oxytocin is released into circulation in the female, it's going to target the uterus. So I always draw this funky little picture. So I get two ovaries, they're connected by fallopian tubes to the uterus, and then there's the vaginal wall. So in the case of the non-pregnant female, the oxytocin is going to target the uterus at the end of a 28-day menstrual cycle, and it's going to cause contractions. that cause sloughing of lining. It would help if I spelled that, right? Sloughing of lining. And that sloughing of the lining is going to be the menstruation period. Now, in addition, remember during sexual stimulation, we're going to get reverse peristalsis. And that reverse peristalsis is designed to help draw sperm into the female system and increase the likelihood that the female is going to experience a pregnancy. At least it tries to increase the likelihood of a pregnancy. Okay, so those are positive signals to the hypothalamus that are going to cause the release of oxytocin into the tissue. Okay, 
so next we're going to consider oxytocin in the pregnant female. Now, oxytocin in the pregnant female is going to be increasing over the third trimester. The placenta is going to be producing progesterone to try to combat the effect of oxytocin. And the sensitivity to oxytocin is going to increase as we get closer and closer to delivery by upregulation of receptors for oxytocin. So in this case, my uterus is pregnant, so I get a baby on the inside. And when oxytocin is released due to increased stretching of the uterus, this is going to trigger the hypothalamus to begin the secretion of oxytocin. The bigger the stretch, the more oxytocin is released. And as the uterus gets closer to delivery, we upregulate more and more receptors, so we're going to get closer and closer to the delivery. Once we get large amounts of oxytocin and when progesterone levels fall, which will happen at the end of a pregnancy, we're going to get the release of oxytocin and that oxytocin is going to increase contractions. For delivery. So this is going to bring us through the labor process. We'll get the expulsion of the fetus from the female's body and that will effectively terminate the pregnancy with this happy ending of having the baby. Oxytocin also is going to be important in the months post delivery. And that's because oxytocin has an effect on the breast tissue. So as you may remember from previous illustrations of mine, that the prolactin is produced by glands that are inside the breast tissue. That prolactin produces the milk, but the prolactin can't get the milk out. So the oxytocin targets the milk glands and causes the breast to start releasing the milk. So drop of milk here coming out of the breast tissue. Okay, So oxytocin is going to be important in milk ejection during lactation. Okay, And this is going to take place post partition. So what is it that causes milk ejection to be occurring every time the baby suckles? Well, milk ejection is going to take place in response to suckling. So when suckling takes place, we get a trigger to the hypothalamus to release oxytocin. And as oxytocin is released into circulation, this is going to cause the ejection of milk. As any lactating female will tell you, once that oxytocin starts surging into the system, the breast will express milk regardless of whether or not the baby is still suckling. So this increases the ease by which the baby suckles after the first initial drags off of the breast tissue. So this gives us the combination of non-pregnant effects and pregnant effects of oxytocin on the female system. The last idea to present is are these protein or lipid based hormones. Well, oxytocin is a protein based hormone, as are virtually every hormone that are produced by the pituitary gland. So this protein based hormone enters into circulation. It targets the tissues to cause an effect and has a relatively short half-life. So post-delivery, for example, when there's no longer any stretch on the uterus, then I take away the signal for the release of the oxytocin. So the moral of the story here is that oxytocin has an effect on stimulating smooth muscle cells in the uterus and of the breast tissue. We see effects in the female both in the non-pregnant state and the pregnant state. A non-pregnant female will release oxytocin to increase contraction of the uterine lining during the period. This may help accommodate or account for some of the crampy feelings that a female feels during her period. And then during the sexual response, oxytocin is released in both the males and the females. We've only talked about the female here in that oxytocin will cause reverse peristalsis of the uterus muscle during sex to help draw sperm into the female system, increasing the likelihood of a pregnancy. 
and then in a pregnant female oxytocin comes back into play at the end of the pregnancy to deliver the fetus and it is the effect of oxytocin on the uterine muscles which causes contraction. If a female does not secrete adequate amounts of oxytocin on her own, we have a synthetic version called pitocin which can be administered to facilitate the laboring process. Post labor and once the baby has been delivered, the oxytocin will be released in surges with prolactin during suckling of the breast and that's going to cause the milk to be ejected from the breast tissue during the lactation process.